So just a quick update video. It's been a while since I've posted. I had some uh, uh, responsibilities, I guess, for lack of a better term, that uh, pulled me away for about a month, um, just taking care of other things. But uh, since I've gotten back, I've been able to invest some uh, time on this uh, machine and um, I, I, maybe I will give it away, but uh, I've actually had it running and it runs well. Um, it's still, it's one of those things where, you know, a famous aviation term is uh, when you're building a, a home built project, um, you know, you say it's 90% uh, complete, but 50% left, left to go. And I think we're kind of at that point here. So um, yeah, you can see that it's set up with an accessory fuel tank. I wasn't uh, ready to, I don't know if you can see it back there, right beside the Vortex Leaf Hog on top of the Rubbermaid, but I wasn't ready to start hacking into that fuel tank until I knew this thing actually ran. And um, uh, based on uh, what uh, has just transpired, uh, I would have to say it uh, runs. So I think the last video I posted, I did have it up on its uh, wheels, but no tires mounted. So these are the old uh, uh, amazing Michelin Power Cup 2s that were on the KTM. Uh, didn't throw them away, just used them on this thing. Not that I'd ever, well, who knows, I might try them on the track. But anyway, they, they stayed outside all winter and and froze rock solid. So we'll talk about tires later. Anyway, so yes, uh, the carburetors are on. Um, they, it, it has, it, it's slightly lean on the, um, on the uh, idle circuit, slightly. Um, so anyway, uh, what I need to do is 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 uh, take the carburetors off once everything is cooled off and uh, take down some notes and start thinking about what I'm going to do for jetting and maybe even reach out to uh, people on Facebook or even uh, Sedco down in the States. They're, they are oddball carbs. Um, you know, someone might say, oh, they're 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 too small, you know, buy some FCR 39s and we all know how expensive those are. So these are FCR 33s set up for a Monster 400. This is a Monster 600, which is now a Monster 680. So I'm hoping that with a bit of work with, uh, with carburation uh, adjustments and, and jet sizes, I can, I can get something, something right. But um, yeah, it, was, it took a little while to file, uh, fire. I do have the, the fuel screws or the pilot screws, or I gotta get my key and terminology back into my head rather than my Makuni terminology. But uh, anyway, I did have to, uh, let's call them the idle jets. I did have to uh, screw them out three full turns um, which adds more fuel, which is a bit uh, too much, according to uh, according to the experts. So, I do uh, I do need a larger uh, pilot and, and um, fuel screw. Anyway, um, where should I start? Well, you can see that uh, I did have to get a slightly larger than I originally had planned lithium ion battery. I was still able to use the battery box. There's foam in there. I'm going to add a, a Velcro strap to keep it from going anywhere, but you know that's not going anywhere um this is the uh the uh aftermarket um regular rectifier wiring so uh, uh three positive leads this pink one goes back to the tachometer and then uh these three ground straps uh one of them is grounded to the case one of them is the ground for the regular rectifier and one of them is the ground wire for the harness so you can see that I've really trimmed down the harness here. I do need to rewrap it because um, I didn't want to wrap it all up and then have to cut into it if something didn't work. But uh, yeah, um, some of these relays, I'm not 100% sure I still need them. This one, it appears that I do. This one, and then we've only got uh, these three fuses there. So I'll put the, the, um, the uh, cover on that fuse box. So again, these anti-gravity batteries, bloody expensive but they weigh a pound, 230 cold cranking amps. It's pretty amazing. So I've wasted a lot of uh, zip ties routing the wiring just to make sure it uh, works because you know you, you eyeball it and then you cut it and it ends up being too long or, or too short. As it is, this, uh, this ground wire here to the engine case is, is maybe two centimeters too long. So I will tidy up all this wiring here, but it goes onto this tack. Um, I fabricated this fairing mount for these fairings here, which are currently being adjusted or modified slightly um, to, uh, 
to work in this uh, setup. So yeah, no no clutch cable, no brake cable, um, nothing ready to go here. Um, so again, I wanted to make sure the bloody thing ran before I started spending upwards of, of $150 to $200 Canadian on uh, brake and, and clutch lines. So uh, yeah, anyway, so this is it. I haven't mounted the chain yet. Uh, this is the beautiful work that uh, Brent did at um, Ironcraft. So this is the cone muffler. This is the titanium um, two into one that I got from uh, Bai out in Japan. Uh, I'll get some titanium spring hooks uh, for this end and then Brent can fabricate that. It's a really nice slip fit. So once again, thanks to Midas Muffler and, and Brandon for, for putting that on. I did mount the, uh, the starter there it's mostly covered by the uh by the tail fairing when it goes on um yeah uh you can see the the uh you know it's funny someone said um and and looking back maybe i i was a bit premature but i, I think it was brad black or someone on facebook said 90 percent of carburetor problems are uh, are electrical so um yeah i've got a bit of a weep on the float bowl uh, I gotta sort out um, so the, the fact that this thing wouldn't run worth shit when it was in the pantaframe might have more to do with um, might have more to do with um, the uh, the the igniter coils behind here than anything else so I went and bought uh, new igniter coils. I got the California Cycle Works coils. Um, I've got the uh, the upgraded uh, lithium compatible um, uh, regulator rectifier. So that might be the reason why I was having, you know, uh, running problems when it was in the other frame. The other thing, though, though, is uh, when I had it in the Panta frame, you can't take off um, the uh, the side cover with it in the frame and it's pretty damn tight here too but I think you can uh, you can um, manipulate it off here so there's nothing like having you know a situation where you have to take the engine out of the frame to to adjust the um, the, the the timing gap or the air gap um, in the igniters it's just it just wasn't uh, wasn't acceptable so um, yeah I bought a rebuild kit for uh, the carburetors, uh, float bowl gaskets, that sort of thing. One of the uh, accelerator pump diaphragms for one of the carbs wasn't actually working. I tested it. Um, I tested it uh, 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 last year, so I, I got that replaced. Um, so yeah, there it's it's sweating a bit. I think I'm not sure if it's in the f in the float bowl. Oh, it's not there. I don't, I don't think it's there, but, um, yeah, I'll just replace that float or, or check that float bowl gasket again. But yeah, I have to go through the carbs and, and, and do something with jetting because it's set up for a, a 400, not a, not a 680. So, um, hopefully I don't chase myself too much in circles trying to get proper uh, proper jetting for this configuration I, I, I don't think I will I think I'll be able to come up with something that uh, that works so anyway promise pinky promise it was running um, so let's see if I can fire it up again so I set up the wiring so that there's just a simple uh, 25 amp rocker switch there um, and this is a, a switch here just just to power the the gauge uh, there's always a little bit of a draw and I don't like the idea of a constant draw on that uh, lithium-ion battery so when it's all shut off you you flick that switch and um, and there's no draw on the battery whatsoever so anyway there should be enough fuel there let's see if it'll still run oops here we go Honestly, even with that um, megaphone muffler, it's not uh, really not too obscene in terms of noise. So uh, the tack works. As you can see, it's in uh, in neutral. Got proper oil pressure. And um, yeah, 
A little fluffy off the bottom end so uh, definitely got to work with some uh, some uh, jetting inside the carburetor but you know the considering how long I fought with those Delorto carburetors this did take me a while to figure out but the damn thing's running which is uh, which I'm pretty happy with and, and uh, yeah huge major hurdle overdone I'll keep working on the bodywork to get that to fit uh, better, tidy up the wiring, and uh, figure out where to go next with the carbs. Sounds alright if you ask me. Like and subscribe.